Welcome to the Scoop School Podcast, where we tackle your conundrums about the retail ice cream and frozen dessert business. And now, here's your host, Hokey Pokey, is more than just a dance to him. The ice cream bloke and self-appointed headmaster of Scoop School, Steve Christensen. G'day ice cream lovers, my name's Steve Christensen, thanks for tuning in, it's nice to have you here. Look, whether you're watching on YouTube, which has become extremely popular, very international audience too. Bulk of our uh, viewers are from the United States, but we get new subscribers from all over the world. The UK, throughout Europe, Africa, Asia, Australia and New Zealand. It's great to have you here. Subscribe and you'll get this ice cream goodness into your inbox every day. We do want to thank our sponsor, which is Weber Flavors, for this particular episode. Go to WeberFlavors.com, W-E-B-E-R. There's a huge range of flavors and colors there that I think you'll really respect. I mean, they've got some unique stuff, they've got some traditional stuff, it's well worth a look. WeberFlavors.com to either uh, color or flavor your soft serve products, your batch frozen products, or your frozen custard products, WeberFlavor.com. Uh, we thank you for your episode sponsorship. Now, Last video we spoke a little bit about the writing on menu boards. Really important, reduce the writing, make the images bigger. This video I want to talk a little bit about proprietary menu items. Now I see this all the time. Again, we've had over 1200 people graduate through our ice cream classes, scoopschool.com, uh, but I've spoken to tens of thousands of people over the past 15 years on opening or growing their own ice cream businesses. And one thing I see all the time is that new owners love to have something, a proprietary menu item, whether it's one or three or ten, that you can only get at your ice cream shop and nowhere else. Now the downside of doing that, and I'm all about proprietary items, believe me, I think you need to have a point of difference between yourself and your other businesses, but here's the issue. A lot of places I see like to put crazy names on these proprietary items, and I'll give you an example. So one name that I've kind of come across uh, and I apologize because it's been too long. I don't remember which store it was. If it's you, I apologize. Uh, but for example, the Hurdy Gurdy. So I'm a customer. I walk up to your ice cream shop and I see, there's no pictures on the menu board. It's just explanations. And I see this product or this item on the menu board called the Hurdy Gurdy. Now the Hurdy Gurdy does not indicate to me one iota what that is. I don't know if it's a sundae. I don't know if it's a shake. I don't know if it's a cone. I don't know if it's a flavor. So now because you've got that proprietary product and you, nobody knows what it is, now you need to put a paragraph underneath to explain exactly what the hurdy-gurdy is. And so now you've taken up valuable space on your menu board by explaining a product that no one really knows what it is because you felt like you need to have a proprietary product on the menu board. You don't need to. I think that you can make signature products, take those traditional products and make them signature products. For example, you'll see on the menu board behind me here that we have a featured Sunday um, panel, and these are basically a two foot by three foot printed panel. Uh, I think we had fast signs do them. At the time, they were about $60, $65 to have them done. But you'll see that our featured Sundays here, there's nothing really crazy there. It's just basically our spin on a traditional product. So you're looking at a pretzley. Now, the business that we bought and went into, they had an Elvis pretzley. I dropped the Elvis because I didn't want Graceland to come after me with a cease and desist. So I just called it the pretzley. It was chocolate and pretzels, basically. But then you've got your turtle sundae, relatively traditional sundae. A hot fudge, hot caramel on vanilla ice cream with pecans, I've sometimes seen it with cashews, nuts, cream, cherry. You've also got the Hawaiian. Again, nothing crazy. Uh, vanilla ice cream with uh, bananas, pineapple, and coconut. We've got the tri-berry, which again was a little bit of a spin on what we would do at that traditional uh, strawberry sundae. We would put blueberries and raspberries and call it a tri-berry, three berries. And then we had our strawberry shortcake, our Belgian waffle, and our brownie sundaes. Again, nothing too outlandish, but we put our own personal spin, or we proprietized, if that's a word, these traditional menu items. And I don't know whether you want to put some crazy, wacky, hugely proprietary product on your menu board and take up that valuable real estate. If it were me, 
I would use your traditional items as the core products on your menu, and then I would try some of these proprietary uh, items as an LTO or a limited time offer. Remember, this typically doesn't change throughout the year, but you can rotate through limited time offers. So if you want to try that dirt and worms sundae with a, a, a green a mint topping, which sounds terrible to me, but you might want to try it for yourself, then put it on a pop-up uh, uh, frame or a pop-up stand near the register and say, hey, would you like to try a limited time offer? It's our dirt, worms and slime Sunday. And that way, you're not really using the testing ground or you're not using your menu boards as a testing ground to see if something works. This should be for your core products, traditional products or your signature products. Proprietary items that are really kind of off the wall should really be trialed first in a limited time offer setting. So again, try and stick with the tried and true pro uh, uh, products that people just, you know that they love. They're gonna come in, they're gonna order the banana splits, they're gonna order the traditional sundaes, the concretes, the shakes, all those kind of things. And then rotate through some of these proprietary items that are extremely unique on a limited time offer basis first before you start putting them on the menu board. Hope that makes sense. Look, everybody wants to have a point of difference in their business, I totally get that. But you want also customers to come in and feel comfortable looking at the menu board and not having to ask, uh, can I just ask what this is? Or uh, can I ask what this is? It creates this almost barrier to comfort coming in your store and basically ordering something that they feel comfortable ordering. So again, tried and true favorites on the menu board, rotate the other stores, limited time offers. Hey, it might not work for you, it might work for you, I'm interested in your comments. Why don't you jump down here, whether you're on YouTube or on Facebook, uh, leave a comment. I really do try to respond to all of them. Uh, I really appreciate your point of view. Thanks for scooping, thanks for scooping. Thanks for tuning in everybody. Again, thanks for Web and Flav Web of Flavors for coming in, tongue tied at the end of the podcast. Uh, keep on scooping folks, we'll see you in the next one.